gets in, gets in. What a three points there. Um, wow. <laughs> if, if there's a game to get three points, it's Portsmouth, especially when you're Andy Butler. What a performance. That's what we cry out for week in, week out. Show the badge means something to you. And those every single one of them players showed something for that badge tonight. It was amazing. Wonderful performances tonight. Uh, Dongster Rovers 2, Portsmouth 1. I predicted the score right. That's the first time this season I've actually predicted the score right. Or the first out of a couple of times i predicted the score right this season. Um... But what a game. What a game. What a performance. Overall, amazing. And you know what? To be fair, I pref looking at that game alone, I prefer Butler style to Moores. And the reason why I prefer Butler style to Moores is when Moore is under pressure, he'll get his players to play side to side, play it back to the goalkeeper and start again. With Butler... I rarely saw it go back to the goalkeeper unless it was need to. I rarely saw that. I saw from back to front, pressing on the ball, off the ball, direct, playing for the badge, putting in 100%, putting in 110% for 90 minutes you're on the pitch. For the, for the minutes you're on the pitch, if it's uh, a few minutes, one half, or you're on for 90 minutes, they put in every single bit of energy that they could into that performance. And that's what we cry out for week in, week out. And that is what they did tonight. Absolutely 110%. And it helped us a bit as well with a couple of results that went our way. Uh, Peter Bradrew with Oxford, which is brilliant. Uh, Lincoln lost to Fleetwood. Well done, Fleetwood. Shout out to Cods Vlogs. And um, even though Hull won against 10-man Rochdale, you know what, we'll take that. We'll hopefully catch up to them soon. But the top two didn't win. And that was brilliant. Portsmouth, obviously, we beat. Sunderland, they just beat Swindon with a 1-0, I think. So, um, you know, again, wonderful performances all around and brilliant. Before we go on about player ratings and what we need to do against Plymouth on Saturday, we have to talk about individual moments. First of all, I want to give a massive shout-out to Ian, um, Ian Dancer... Uh, Ian Danter, sorry, <laughs> I keep saying it wrong, Ian Danter uh, from TalkSport because we did that interview uh, this morning about the Moore exit, about Butler's appointment and you know, even he said, you know, I'm, I'm happy about Butler, it's a good continuity appointment and that is why that's a good continuity appointment because he could be the man to take us forward, he's the man that puts 110% into this club, he's a popular figure, he does the right job and you know what? It's a hidden gem. We may have discovered a hidden gem. And I said it in the, um, I think in one of the recent videos, I said that he could be another Dave Penny, a player to manager situation and give us the glory. And, you know, this is the first step. We take it one game at a time, but I'll tell you what, this is the first step. A few players I need to highlight tonight. John Bostock, that guy, I swear on my life, he w and I think so. I think a fan put a tweet out there saying it was like watching a man versus kids, and I think I probably second that um, quotation. It was like watching Emperor Colossus against um, Mini Minions. I think he was just walking through the Valley of the Kings and just, you know, stomping his way seven seven hundred feet tall giant against two feet minions. Um, it was wonderful. Um, it was brilliant. Absolutely wonderful performance from Bostock. Reese James. Again, I think he's man of the match. Comment down below if you think Reese James is man of the match. Um, but wow. Again, what a performance from Reese James tonight. Um, you know, James, James Coppinger, I swear that guy. If he scored that bicycle kick, that would have completed his career. 110%. But you know what? Overall... Wonderful performance. The goal that was offside that Okunabiri scored. Um, you know, that's a wonderful through pass from Coppinger and overall did very, very well. Okunabiri and Bogle. You know what I saw tonight? I saw Okunabiri and Bogle linking up so well tonight. So well, especially, especially in that second half. I saw a second half performance uh, turn around because we have to admit it. We have to be open and honest. I think in the first sort of 10 minutes of the second half, at 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes of the second half. Portsmouth changed their shape. They brought off uh, Emnoga and Curtis. They brought on Marquis, our former player, uh, and Andy Cannon. He was one of the main difference makers. And then when Marcus Harness came on, 
His decision making was poor, Marcus Harness, but what I will say about Harness is his pressure and his distribution around trying to get into the creative spaces was brilliant. He was getting in the right areas, but the decision making wasn't on for him. Uh, John Marcus put in a couple of tackles, fouled a couple of players, but apart from that goal, it was it was all right coming back at the club. So uh, thank you for Marquise for uh, giving us three points. <laughs> um, and I think that Andy Cannon, I think for Portsmouth, he was the main difference maker in that midfield. But there was one thing from minute one to minute ninety that concerned me from a Portsmouth point of view: their bat line. The first goal. Um, I think that was just that was just a wonderful goal from Reese James. Lovely through ball from Bostock. Brilliant finish from James in the corner. And it was a nice 1-0 lead to take into half time. Made it 2-0 in the second half. Obviously, we had the offside goal that was obviously not counted. And there was a couple of times where we could have made it 4 or 5. But um, the second goal, Okunabiri, he could have crossed that. But he's got that goal scoring form back in him now. And from a tight angle, he struck that in the roof of the net. And, you know, does Portsmouth have to raise questions? Questions about um, the keeper, McGillivray, uh, on that second goal? In my opinion, probably. I think that the whole Portsmouth defence needs to be looked at about that particular goal. Um, but there was other times that we came in. Jason Lakilo, when he came on, he looked lively. Scott Robertson, when he came on, he looked lively. Taylor Richards, when he came on, looked an absolute storm. It was like watching... Uh, that film Sharknado with this humongous shark tornado coming towards you. He was a brute force as soon as he came on the pitch. Um, and overall, it was a wonderful performance. So let's go on about player ratings overall. And we're going to tell you then about what we need to do uh, to continue this against um, Plymouth on Saturday, uh, before we tell you what we need to do on Plymouth. Uh, we're going to go through player ratings first. But first of all, quickly note, and in, into the empty net tweeted this. Tom Anderson summing us all up by screaming defiantly as the full-time whistle blew. That win means everything. And I agree with that tweet. 110% I agree with that tweet because... And there was another point, actually, in the second half. I think it was a moment where Portsmouth just missed. Or I think they just got it cleared away and it was saved, etc. Tom Anderson turned back, screamed at his midfield and his, and his teammates like, Come on! Come on! Fight back! Tom Anderson is the captain we all missed when he was injured. We all missed him when he was injured, 110%. And he's got that passion in him. And he's and you could tell at full time, screaming in delight with those with those three points. And we needed three precious points right there. So let's go into the player ratings and let's have a look and see what uh, is up with that. So let's start off then with the goalkeeper. Uh, Lewis Jones, I'm going to give him... We're going to give him a six. I think that with the Marquis goal... Could have done a bit better, maybe, maybe not. But overall, I'd, I'd, get, I'd say he had a good performance. Um, uh, it, it's a shame he didn't get his clean sheet, but overall his distribution was good. I think uh, distribution is probably better than Balcom, but um, you know, overall for that homegrown talent, if he's going to be number one keeper next season, then you know, keep our feet on the ground for now. T take it one game at a time. But I tell you something now, Lewis Jones, he's definitely one for the future. I've got to say that now. Um, back four, Halliday. I'm going to. I'm going to give him the 6. I'm going to give him the 6, pushing it up to a 7. He, he came fo forward a lot more in that second half. And overall, just putting a good performance. He just showed exactly how good he is for this squad. Uh, Tom Anderson gets a 7, uh, pushing towards an 8 nearly. Uh, but a very high 7 for me. Uh, overall, commanded the box really well. Defended amazingly. Um, just overall, just putting a wonderful shift again for this club, and he just does it every single time. Joe Wright gets a seven as well. Again, blocked really well, got in really well, defended the back line brilliantly. Reese James nine, and my man of the match. Defiant blocks, stopping the equaliser at the end, um, going forward, pressing hard, getting the goal. He is the best left back we've had. Since the Sean O'Driscoll era. And if you've seen my halftime live on Twitter. You'd have seen I said the same thing. And I stick by that statement. Uh, into the midfield. Matt Smith gets a 7. I thought he put himself about really really well. Made the midfield tick really really well. And grinded the gears of the Portsmouth lot. So as soon as we found our rhythm in that second half. We grinded their gears. And Matt Smith was a part of that. 
Uh, John Bostock, he gets an 8 as well. Very close to a 9. He was a men against boys when he was on the ball. He was just... It was like school's out for summer and the bullies all came to town. And he was bully in that midfield. Absolutely bully Portsmouth off the park from all the time he was on the pitch. From minute 1 to when he came off. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Josh Sims, uh, I'm going to give him a 7. Again, very attacking. He rarely got on the ball in the second half, but on his first half performance, he deserved a 7 from when he was on anyway. Uh, but he did have to sort of come off. You know, he, he was down and he came up again. He looked fine when he walked off. He looked a little bit sluggish, etc. But And and Bostock sort of walked around the other side of the pitch and looked a bit sluggish. But you know what? I don't think there's any worries with those two. I think it's just precautionary changes. Oh, Luton's gone 1-0 up against Luton and Forest. Very interesting. Um, James Coppinger. Uh, high six. I'm gonna go. I was gonna go with a seven from the first half, but I think just a high. S no, you know what? No, screw it. Seven. Uh, um, f br brilliant first half performance. Uh, tried to uh, played it a bit easy in the second half, but was still dangerous and still on it. And uh, when he came off, you could see he did, he did the he did the right work. Tried the bicycle kick. I wish that connected. We could we could have all screamed for that one. But um, yeah, Coppinger, legend. Couldn't have done any more than that. Uh, John Taylor, obviously I'm going to give him the average 5, like I said in the half time live on Twitter, because uh, he did come off earlier than expected with the injury, and uh, obviously Omar Bogle, I'm actually going to give him a just inside the 7, and the reason why I'm going to give him just inside the 7 is because his build up play again was magnificent, he just missed that chance, the, the couple of chances to get on goal. Uh, on to the subs bench then, uh, going through the subs in order, uh, not of how they came on, but in order of how they're listed on here. Uh, Robertson, I'm going to give him a 6, but a high 6, put himself about really, really well. Slotted into the midfield brilliantly and overall did a good job. Um, Richards, 7. As soon as he came on, you knew what that brute force of a human being was going to do. And I said it, I was on, I think it was this afternoon, before. it was a couple of hours before the team news came out. I was on GNA TV, that's Gem and Ads from the Football Terror, who, who sort of provide for the Football Terror in terms of panellists stuff. And I was on their afternoon Premier League show, it was Ads, and it was some Chelsea fans. So, um, and I talked about Taylor Richards being, along with Matt Smith, being some of the young guns that could be ones to watch. Taylor Richards is the reason why, it, that is the reason why he's one to watch Taylor Richards, along with Matt Smith. Taylor Richards absolutely bullied them as soon as he come on that pitch and, he, and you know does he start over Coppinger in the next game against Plymouth it's hard it's hard because both of them are brilliant and then uh, finally uh, well we got the kilo first of all uh, I'm going to give him a six um tried to get involved really energetic when he came on was shutting people down trying to go for the skills trying to go for the crosses and really made the defenders work in the fullback roles and then finally looking at beer I'm going to give him a seven uh, quite a mid to high seven and I think that that's brilliant because um, you know got the goal bang on form and came on was that energetic and it, it immediately grabbed that partnership like a ball by the horns with Omar Bogle so overall very impressed with both of them um, so what do we need to do against Plymouth to keep this run going to keep to keep to make this one win into two well what can we do to make it one win and then two net two wins on Saturday just keep playing the way we're playing. This way, I like this style of play because when we are under pressure, we don't go, you know, we don't pass side to side. We go forward. We go direct. We go aggressive. We go pressing. We don't stop from minute one to minute 90, no matter who's on the pitch. And I think this is going to be the test now. I think this is the test now for, for some of the players. I think, you know, th there's been players that have underperformed in some games, not all the games, because they have performed in some games, which have been brilliant. Some games they haven't under they, they have underperformed. Some games they haven't. And for those players, I'm not going to name names because obviously it's not fair. But I think it's going it's a test now if those players get a chance uh, between now and the end of the season to come on and make a claim for this team, make a stakehold for this team, and to prove to Butler the ca the brilliant Andy Butler character that he is. Prove to Butler that you deserve to be in this first team next season. And, you know, for the for the likes of these players, I think it's going to be crucial for them but between now and the end of the season. So, I'm happy. Everyone should be happy. Butler waves his magic hat and abracadabra, the wins are starting to appear. And with other results going our way, mate, we, we, we're back in the top two race, top three, top four race. 
we could, um, with Lincoln and with Lincoln and Peterborough drawing and losing respectively, and Hull winning but still on an inconsistent run at times, we could we could make top three. You know, with Portsmouth losing to us, with Sunderland just winning, they're still in the hunt. We've got games in hand. Ipswich, um, you know, they're they're creeping up on us with a win over Accrington today. I'll tell you something now, we are in the hunt for top two. Don't miss many my eight bones about it. I'm not going to jump to conclusions, but we are in the running for top two, no doubt about it. M maximum we can get is title. Minimum top six. We will finish in the top six this season, no doubt about it. Um, so thank you very much, guys, for watching this match review. Please like, comment, subscribe for more. And for now, guys, my name is Aaron Chandler from Forever Football DRFC. Again, massive shout-out to uh, Ian Danta. Um, for appearing on um, the, the the interview this morning talking about the exit of Darren Moore and the appointment of Andy Butler. It's going to be a brilliant uh, managerial career for Andy Butler if it's going to be the same as what it is tonight. And uh, for now, guys, thank you very much. By the way, I did enjoy your commentary over watching the match. I watched the match on the iFollow app and then I uh, uh, had both their commentary and TalkSport commentary with Neil Redfern and uh, Ian Danter. So uh, massive thank you to Ian for that interview. And uh, thank you very much, guys. I'm Aaron Chandler from Forever Football DRFC. Keep living the Rovers life. And that, my friends, is full time. Rovers till I die. Let's get three points on Saturday. Come on. See you on the preview on Friday.